Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here today to talk to you about spell boxes or dream boxes. So, the one that I'm holding on in my hand is more so a spell box rather than a dream box. And the way that you differentiate or the uh, methods that you use that differentiate those kinds of boxes really are largely about when you are going to be working with your box and where you're going to be keeping your box. So if I wanted this to be a dream box, I would keep this on my nightstand on my bedside table and I would pray over it or do some manifesting exercise with it or some visualizations with it while holding it in my hands each night before going to sleep as well as each morning when I wake up. But another reason that it's called a dream box is because it contains within it the big picture goals or the big picture dreams that we're seeking. So a spell box is really a great way to work on those larger goals that we know are going to take time and consistent effort to manifest and that are also going to encapsulate several different smaller goals or smaller steps along the way. And this is a way for us to create a sustained support for that larger goal and a way for us to reinforce our focus and reinforce our willpower and have a physical reminder of that magical energy, that spiritual support that we're drawing into our lives for that goal. But it's also very similar to a mojo bag in a lot of ways. So the ingredients that we use to it should be in an odd number. Number seven is a traditional number of items to use in a spell box, but you could also do 13. Those are two traditional and excellent uh, numbers for magical work, specifically for um, this type of magical work. So the number of items that you use is really important. And another way that it's very similar to a mojo bag is that when you're putting the ingredients together, you're not just throwing things together, you are praying with these, you're working with the energy of the contents, you're working with the energy of the ingredients, and you're asking them to work together. You're creating a microcosm of magical energy within this box. You are asking these ingredients to work together on your behalf and to come together in a way that creates a whole energy within itself or a spirit within itself that is going to be working on your behalf. So another thing that's important and really useful and powerful is to use ingredients from the different elements. So you definitely want to have an ingredient that represents a mineral or a rock. You want to have ingredients that represent the earth. So you need to use botanicals. I've got a feather that represents the air. Try to find ingredients that represent different elements. I've got a shell that represents the sea, that represents the water, and all of these different elements are working together to create a balanced larger whole. This is my personal spell box. So I'm not gonna tell you all about it, but I'm happy to use it as an example. I do have metal in here, I do have roots in here, I have the shells, as I've mentioned. I also have um, several paper petitions and some bones and some magnetic sand. Magnetic sand to assist with drawing, with magnetizing to me the energies that I'm seeking to support my overall goal. There are several paper petitions in here. And the idea behind this is that as you are going about working on your larger goal, as you're accomplishing, accomplishing your smaller steps and your smaller goals to get to that bigger picture place, you're consistently working with your spell box along the way as well. So when I have smaller goals that fit into my larger goal, I'm writing new paper petitions, I'm working with this energy, I'm moving these ingredients around, I am adding things to refresh these ingredients, maybe adding more magnetic sand, adding more botanicals, perhaps taking the ingredients out and cleansing them. This is a living spirit and I am 
engaged in a relationship with this living spirit on a regular basis. So a spell box is not intended to simply sit on your shelf and, and let be. It's intended that you're working consistently with it. You are feeding it, you're giving it energy, you're cleansing it, you're refreshing it, you're praying with it, you're manifesting with it, right? So I have some examples here of other kinds of spell boxes as well as kinds of ingredients that you can add to it. A couple of the things that I have here are from my personal spell box. I keep this one near my ancestor altar and I have the stones that I keep on it that are personal to me and that are personal to our family because my big picture goal that I'm working on with this spell box has to do with my husband and I and goals that we have together for our overall life. I have a piece of stone that is from an ancestral grave of his family as well as a rock that his nephew gave to me. So these are symbols that relate to our overall goal, relate to our, um, our family together and our connection together in that way. So you'll want to also add things that are very personal to you that relate to your goal and relate to your life. And I have two other examples of boxes that I'll be using for spell boxes on behalf of my clients. This one is gonna be wonderful for something like fertility, something like intuition. Obviously with the shells, it's very much related to watery energy. So motherhood, strength in motherhood, um, developing intuition, love, um, money and prosperity, things of that nature. I'm excited to create something wonderful with this one. And then I've got one that's wooden and a little bit bigger that's really neutral. It could really be used for any number of things especially a big picture success. That's what I'm that's what I'm feeling with this. A big picture success like buying a bigger house or relocating um, something of that nature like a long-term um, goal. And I also have some examples of things that you could add to your spell boxes. So you could add some seashells for money to represent prosperity and abundance. Um, I've got a variety of rocks here. I have good luck charms that are personal to me. This would be wonderful to add to your personal spell boxes. Um, I've also got lucky coins that are from all over the world. So if you wanted to travel, this would be a wonderful thing to use. Um, if you were seeking money and abundance, prosperity, obviously this would be a wonderful thing to use. Some lucky coins representing currencies worldwide. I've also got some pyrite. This would be a great representation of your mineral um, in your spell box. And you can really just have fun with it. I find it especially fun to write and rewrite the paper petitions to reinforce what my goals are, to reinforce where I'm at with those goals now, like to reevaluate how far I've come and where I'm headed next, things of this nature. So I hope this gives you some great ideas about spell boxes. And thanks so much for watching. Stay blessed.